Hello and welcome to my easy to understand guide to the Bridge television series and the TV industry. The Bridge is an optional set text that some schools choose to study for the EDUCAS A-Level Media Studies exam component two. Not all schools study this, but if you do, you will study it alongside Life on Mars. And I will be adding videos about both of these programmes to my channel very soon. Now, this video is going to specifically focus on the TV industry and the bridge. And we're going to go through a lot about the companies that were involved so that you understand them. So the bridge is a co-production, an international co-production. And that means it was made by two different countries. So um, it's a Swedish Danish co-production um, and it was broadcast in both Sweden and Denmark. So um, that means that funding you know, came from two different places. It means that um, uh, there are two different global audiences involved and it does complicate things a little bit but it also means that we can understand a little bit more about how those two countries and that international co-production is reflected within the program. The Swedish production company that was involved is a company called Film Lancel. Um, and the Danish production company that was involved is a company called Nimbus Film. Being made by two countries meant that they were able to film in two countries. So um, the co-production side of things kind of maybe opened up options in terms of locations. It does make it quite tricky though if you're filming across two countries because you've got crew, you've got to get your cast to different countries um, and you also need to have you know work regulations and things like that so which countries regulations do you follow? Um, in in um, response to the actual bridge as a specific series they followed the working laws of Sweden but they filmed in both countries so they did have to kind of say we're going to finish, we're going to kind of um, follow the rules and regulations of Sweden. Um, but they did take their cast and crew from both countries. They also got funding from somewhere called the Copenhagen Film Fund, uh, in particular for season three. It meant they had to have more Danish cast and crew involved in the film uh, filming of the TV series. So um, the funding that comes through can affect a TV series in terms of what you can and can't do. Series three of the show also had funding from a place called the Creative Europe Media um, and that organisation is there to specifically fund high budget, high quality programmes um, and they got a one million pound grant um, from that company so quite a lot of money and that meant that the series was able to have that quite high budget, high quality look. That has obviously had an impact on the style of the filmmaking, it feels higher quality when you look at it, um, it made the production value feel higher and increased production values often then help you to sell that program to other countries as well. Other countries are often only interested in programs um, if they feel it, it feels high budget. So in Sweden the bridge was uh, broadcast on a channel called SVT1. Now SVT1 is a little bit like the equivalent of BBC1 here in Britain. Um, they are a national public service broadcaster in Sweden and what that means is they follow this kind of remit, this PSB remit that means that they are there to serve the public it's not about commercial tv then there's no adverts on the channel it's funded by license fees so the audience the public in sweden have to pay a license fee to, to get access to that channel um, and that means that those license fees help to go towards funding the program it means that programmes funded by those licence fees have to be reasonably high quality and they also have to um, you know, be kind of informative, educational in some way uh, and they have to um, please audiences to the extent where audiences don't feel their money is being wasted. Now SVT as a um, channel actually have their own production studios in Malmo um, and that's very useful because obviously um, they were able to use those production studios and locations for filming the TV series as well. So the use of resources from the companies that were involved is quite a good way of, of saving time, saving money um, and, and making production easier. These international co-productions are in becoming increasingly common. It's kind of going through a bit of a fashion at the moment. There's quite a few series that are international co-productions. Um, and I guess they kind of feel a bit exotic, a bit exciting. Um, so uh, they are kind of, uh, you know, becoming something that is growing in the TV world. Although they're still considered reasonably niche, I guess, um, particularly if they are subtitled, what, what English audiences or British audiences would see as subtitles foreign language programming. You know, anything that is subtitled um, and not in English um, is often considered by English audiences as, as being kind of niche. 
um, so it sometimes makes it difficult to um, to make it a mainstream program difficult to convince mainstream audiences to watch it but that's something that they've obviously managed to do with the bridge in Denmark the bridge was broadcast on DR1 which stands for Denmark Radio 1 although they obviously do TV as well as radio again very much like the BBC public uh, service broadcaster license fee funded um, and it's incredibly popular uh, like something like 97% of the country in Denmark access um, a DR um, radio station or TV channel or website at some point every day which is crazy. It, Denmark's quite a small country and so that is considered to be a very mainstream broadcaster and that would have helped them reach a, a much larger audience. In the UK, the bridge was broadcast on BBC4. Now, BBC4 is just one of the BBC's UK channels, um, and in particular, their focus is on international and UK arts, culture, music, um, anything that kind of enriches culture in some way. Um, and they have a specific slot, which is they're dedicated to foreign programming, um, things that are subtitled, and it's a peak slot. So it's kind of prime time, uh, like 9 p.m. slot. Um, and so broadcasting the bridge in this kind of prime time Saturday night, 9 p.m. slot was a great way of reaching those audiences who were specifically interested in kind of international foreign language dramas. As the uh, channels that are involved are all public service broadcasting channels, it means that there's less pressure on them to broadcast very mainstream commercial content. They don't have to broadcast really popular shows. They don't have to think about, oh, we need to get something in that's gonna guarantee us a massive audience. They can afford to take more risks to make programmes that are a little bit more niche, a bit more unusual, um, that potentially might have much smaller audiences. And that is all because of that kind of non-commercial um, public service broadcasting background of those channels that were involved. The bridge was a huge success. Um, you know, it ended up being broadcast in over 174 countries worldwide. It ended up getting four seasons and it's done really well. There was a remake of the show made as well for um, an American market uh, for the FX uh, channel. And there was also a kind of UK France um, international co-production remake called The Tunnel. The fact that the show was remade several times is another example of um, you know, trying to maximise your profit, taking one format, one idea that's been successful and remaking it uh, virtually identically, but with, in, with different languages and different casts for different countries. Um, so it's a great way of, of minimising risk and maximising your profits from one idea. Ofcom is the regulatory board in Britain that regulates the TV industry and they are the organisation that is responsible for ensuring that there's no particularly offensive or harmful content for audiences on TV. Um, so if an audience had particular complaints about the episode of The Bridge, perhaps they thought it was too violent or there might be too much swearing or, you know, when you watch it, you can have a look and see which elements you think people might have complained about. Um, Ofcom would have been the organisation that people could make those complaints to. That's part of the reason why it was scheduled at 9pm, which is after this kind of watershed, which is this kind of idea that after nine o'clock, it's mostly um, programmes aimed at a more adult audience and that children would likely be in bed by that time. Of course, this idea of a watershed is almost null and void now. You know, um, many children are staying up later. Many younger audiences have access to their own TV streaming devices, whether that is a phone or a tablet or a TV or a laptop. Um, the idea of scheduling something at 9 p.m. is almost useless because people can watch and download it anytime they want on BBC iPlayer. Um, so the schedule doesn't even really matter anymore. And so it's important to understand that the regulation of the TV industry and series like The Bridge, um, you know, how they've tried to ensure that younger audiences aren't perhaps watching this show, but that technology has made that particularly difficult. Another issue facing companies in the TV industry at the moment is piracy. When one series is particularly popular, you know, it may be broadcast on TV one night and before they have a chance to sell that series or um, put that episode on in another country, it's already being pirated or illegally uploaded and it's being streamed on pirate websites online. And that will then reduce the number of people viewing that uh, legally on TV. Um, 
So uh, they tried to kind of get around this, the companies involved. So when they broadcast it, they broadcast it at exactly the same time in Sweden and Denmark. So as an international co-production, they put it out in both countries at the same time so that it could, it kind of reduced the possibility that it would be pirated in that kind of one or two hour period and then put online. So that's a way of them trying to maximise their audiences across countries, despite the fact that there is so much illegal piracy now. The show is also now available on Netflix if you are a Netflix user in places like Austria, Germany, Switzerland and Canada as well. So the use of digital streaming sites like Netflix is just supposed to demonstrate, you know, that, that programme makers are very much aware that digital streaming sites like Netflix are becoming increasingly popular and it's a great way of reaching more global audiences, particularly because Netflix will make suggestions for audiences based on programmes that they may have liked that are similar. And that's a great way of reaching audiences that perhaps might not have known about your programme, but when Netflix suggests it, they then watch it. They used a range of marketing techniques to promote the show. There were lots of TV guides and magazines that got interviews with the cast and production crew of The Bridge. So um, very prominent magazines like the Radio Times in the UK, including more specialist uh, magazines like Nordic Noir that very much focuses on that kind of um, Nordic drama that is becoming increasingly popular. Those magazines were enabling um, uh, the cast and crew to tell the audience a bit more about the programme. Audiences were able to find out a bit, a bit more about the story and the characters. Um, and it really gave audiences the idea of these kind of quite strong female characters and this kind of feminist perspective, which would have engaged a lot of audiences. There were also segments done on programmes like This Morning in the UK, which targets a slightly older demographic. It's a good way of appealing to them. And they also took the cast and crew to a TV convention called Nordicana, which is a kind of convention where lots of people who are fans of that Nordic um, TV culture and film culture can get together and learn more about the show. There were kind of um, talks and workshops and, and displays of content. And that was a really great way of targeting those kind of very specific niche fans of the genre. They held a premiere for season three of The Bridge where um, audiences that were huge fans of the show were actually invited to the premiere and that was a great way of d drumming up word of mouth publicity from fans who would then go on to promote the show online. BBC4 had its own website page obviously for the show and on there you could find out more about the characters, the storyline, you could catch up on episodes that you had missed, you could find out when the next episodes were on um, and that was a great way of, of giving audiences more information about the programme. They did also use a range of social media to promote the programme, particularly social media aimed at slightly older audiences like Facebook and Twitter. They had lots of embedded clips and teaser content, as well as interviews on both of those social media sites. They used several hashtags across social media. Um, so the hashtags included the bridge and Bron, Broin as well. Um, and so those hashtags would have helped to try and engage audiences, try and create trends on Twitter as well. Um, and that would have hopefully brought in more audiences too. A lot of the marketing materials utilise that BBC logo uh, for the UK audience. That adds that kind of almost stamp of quality because the BBC logo is so recognisable um, and such a big organisation within Britain that people see that logo and automatically feel the series is going to be a quality one. The marketing material is very much focused on using lots of those kind of Nordic noir genre signifiers so that the genre was really clear to audiences um, and that would have attracted fans of that particular style and genre. The European locations used in the trailer and on some of the other marketing materials were really emphasised, which made it feel kind of escapist and exotic. So a lot of audiences would have seen those locations and settings in the marketing materials and been engaged by them. And it's very clear from the marketing materials as well that, you know, there is that kind of anti-hero involved in the show and that it's quite a strong feminist roles as well. Um, and those things would have engaged quite modern audiences, made it seem a little bit unusual. So that was my easy to understand guide to the bridge and the TV industry. Don't forget to hit subscribe for more videos that would be useful for you and your A-level in media studies. And if you've got any questions, just leave a comment below.